here we go then. Stanford Airport is the start of the Nevo Green 24 hours. Flying out there, hoping to make it to circuit this afternoon. Uh, yeah, the big one. Can't wait for it. Let's go. So we have arrived at the circuit. We're straight on to duties here for the 24 hour weekend. Um, BMW doing a photo shoot of the whole entire grid. Um, all the BMW cars that is, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's going to take a hell of a lot of organising as this is, we have one of the biggest manufacturers uh, to have the biggest entry list basically. So um, yeah, hopefully we can get in before the rain comes in. The sun is out, it's absolutely boiling. It's very unlike the Nürburgring, but I'll take it. Yeah, so I've just had dinner. So that is day one done here. No ring, all the admins done, got all my wristbands, uh, done the photo shoot on the grid as well. And then we've just been over in the BMW Hospitality Lounge overlooking the uh, kink on the G GP circuit um, for a little sort of invite, drinks and food and things like that, which has been cool. Um, so yeah, now time to get to bed. Where ready for tomorrow where, it's where all the real action happens so uh, yeah check back for tomorrow for some uh, cars going fast being loud on circuit at the Nürburgring and there's a beautiful sunset for you as well good morning sports fans and today is day one of the Nürburgring for four hours as yesterday was day zero being admin and nothing on track I mean day isn't anything if you're not on track basically so that's why it's day zero today's agenda we have free practice at half one till three o'clock uh, local time here in Germany um, very chilled out schedule running in pads gearbox uh, calipers discs etc etc getting all formalities done for the race and then at 8 30 this evening so 7 30 UK time it is first qualifying which is also night qualifying um, that is on YouTube, so make sure you check that out on the Nervo Green 24 Hours channel um, on YouTube and yeah, get a chance to see the cars um, going around at night for the first time. The weather's going to be a bit tricky today, I think it's going to be a bit, it's very humid, very hot and uh, it's going to be uh, rainy during the middle of the day. But should <laughs> This can only mean one thing. We are suited, we are booted, the sun is shining, the track is drying. It's time for the first laps of the weekend. Uh, looks pretty sketchy out there. It'll be slicks, but there's damp patches. So yeah, in for a wild ride. Wait for the onboard to come out later on this evening.
from the 101. He's gone purple in sector three. This, this is the car that won the qualification race. Yes, yes. it's David Joe, Pittard at the wheel, guys. David it's... Pittard, mightily impressive uh, in that qualifying race. He had the worst of conditions early on and drove the first in brilliantly. One of those drivers, I feel, who's... I don't say this in a, in a uh, pejorative way, but he's on a very steep learning curve, but he's improving very, very quickly. Um, I don't think, you know, a couple of years ago, you'd necessarily have regarded him as a top Nord Schaefer driver, but now very much on the top of his game. And as you say, Joe, uh, lapping quite quickly, he's coming up to the end of the dotting a hoa. Uh, his time he's got to improve upon is an 8.32.074. Now, I'm not sure if he got through the first sector, um, with that code 60 in place that you were describing or not because uh, it was on the Grand Prix loop and I think he might have been held up by that but Joe we've got another us. one we've got another slow zone as well but it's ex-Muller right, which so is way across the other side the line. David um, Pittard um, unfortunately showing his three letter acronym is PIT Pitt I expected to see him <laughs> dive off to the right there. He's not in the pit. And come into the lane. He's got up the third position it with was. an 8.32.0. Yeah. Good morning, sports fans. From day two of the Never Great 24 Hours, I am out in the belly of the beach here. Out with the fans. No one with section. And look who I found. <laughs> My 27 teammate, Alex Reed from British GT, who has been out here since Wednesday morning, keeping himself topped up with traditional German food, who's given me the tour around of all these crazy structures that they build, the bars, the swimming pools, the music. Uh, yeah, it's pretty mad out here. The weather's awesome for them and everything. So yeah, let's go and check out some of the biggest and baddest structures out here. So a few people have asked to see behind the scenes here at Vaughan Hall Snow Sports and the Mother Ring 24 Hours. So uh, in here is the driver's area. So we've got all of everyone's suits. Uh, they've all got their own little area for helmets, uh, Nomex, gloves, boots, etc, etc. Uh, this is where we can all get changed, leave our stuff, etc. Um, behind us, we have a massage going on just here. So we've got a physiotherapist uh, and trainer in with the team as well. And then up here, we've got some beds as well. So uh, this is where we were attempt to get to some sleep, but I can tell you already, it's absolutely boiling. It's smelly and it's going to be noisy in the middle of the race. So I'm not sure how much sleep we're going to get for that. So um, yeah, that is the driver's truck. So with all of the formalities out of the way, this is where the business end of the weekend started. Here you can see Christian picking out his number for the starting position of the top 30 shootout. The shootout itself was okay. Admittedly, we were a little bit disappointed with qualifying P13 overall. Top BMW, which was really, really good. However, the BMWs had had a balanced performance adjustment update because of our success at the Nürburgring qualifying race. So we wanted a shot really at the top. So this photo that my friend James, who came to watch Captured, I think was a brilliant summary of that evening where we all felt quite different emotions collectively. Uh, and just this photo happened to catch us all having a team driver discussion about the event, uh, the top 30 shootout, the, the cars and the cars uh, handling characteristics and kind of what we felt really. And I think if anything, this motivated us more because we felt a little bit hard done by in terms of our overall pace. Uh, and we really wanted to change that uh, going into race day. So yeah, that was us starting P13 for the 2019 qualify, um, 2019, 24 hours of Nürburgring. Um, so yeah, nothing left to do but an early bed and then get ready for the big day tomorrow.
So here we are, the big day, the big event. We are on the grid here. 101 cars looking fast. And uh, yeah, the amount of people here is crazy. Literally, as far as I can see, helicopters are in the air, the sun is out. It's going to be a mega, mega race. So yeah, make sure you tune into the live stream uh, to watch it on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, buckle up, hold on, and I'll see you on the other side. Lap, but we're very soon going to be racing for 2019 the 47th edition of the Nürburgring 24 hours 58 cars in this league group 28 of them qualified last night and they're already going because the red light has been extinguished AMG versus AMG but there's nothing Lance David Arnold can do about the Maro Engel star the orange and black Black Falcon car then jumping ahead of the car that was up alongside. But look out for the Porsche of Kevin Estra right round the outside, maybe for second, but can't quite do it. Slotting into fourth position is Matt Campbell in the red and white Fricadelli Porsche. It's four abreast GT3 cars at the first S bend. Quite how everybody got through, I will never know. And there's still two abreast heading down towards the sweeping curves. Uh, they didn't all get through. That's the answer because the BMW team Schnitzer car, uh, number 40. Uh, has had a moment and now is back up and running. That was how Gusto Farfers. So with our P13 start, it meant we were right in amongst the pack at the start of the race. And as you can see here, so just outside around the top 10 is where we were stuck in a very thick gaggle of cars, all jockeying and battling hard position and ultimately losing time to the front um, cars ahead. And we wanted to be out of that as soon as possible. So our plan was to try and get out of that um, and then become off strategy and make use of the clean air and go forward as opposed to battling with everyone. However, with being so close, we had to play the strategy game and a long strategy game to make it happen. What was being recovered was the 92 GT tyre motorsport Volkswagen Golf Mark VI GTI car has now made it back to the pits but on the end of a tow rope uh, BMW is darting down pit lane one of them was a Rover racing BMW the other one a Falcon horse car I think that was the 101 who's for those three cars behind that's the MKR engineering Cayman which runs in cup three and was about eighth position when that incident happened so yeah just to reiterate that Johnny Christian Krogner's at the wheel of the Falcon horse BMW Connor de Philippe <laughs> Uh, I didn't see the start of how Kevin Estra got that run and I just wonder whether again Engel to a certain extent a sitting duck because he's got to get through the traffic first it's a bit like being first on the road when it starts to rain as well you're the one that has to make all the decisions and the guy behind can either choose to go with your decision or a completely different route and that's kind of what Jan Seyfart did a little while ago to head to get ahead of the Michael Schumacher S whilst the Maro Engel Mercedes and the now Michael Christensen driven number 911 cars drop to second and third positions and the gap uh, starting to come down a little bit now between the third place car of Christensen and new fourth place car David Pittard who took over the number 101 BMW at that uh, latest stop number 101 pitted after six laps so was able to do a shorter stop and we find a BMW M6 all of a sudden up as far as far as fourth position and it was looking somewhat bleak for the M6s during the opening stint. Are they playing the very long game here in order to try and get the BMWs up at the sharp end? So after having a comfortable run in P4, chasing down the Manta course with uh, Michael Christensen, two laps from the end of my stint, this happened. Into miss, hit, miss. And I start to lose the rear end. You can see an error message on the dash. It, race run. See from my reaction that I'm in disbelief that it's even happened. I'm starting to feel out what's up with the car, what's wrong with the car, uh, but I can feel that the I'm on the radio to the team trying to inform them that the um, coverage around the Norge Life is not great. Uh, but as you can see from the steering, there's something quite wrong with the suspension. 
and I unfortunately just had to park the car down at the Brightside Bridge and that was our Nürburgring 24 hours 2019 done barely an hour and a half into the race. So that is the Nürburgring 2019 done. Unfortunately for us it barely lasted an hour and a half. Uh, what, from what investigations that we then undertook on the car it looks like a hose clip of some sort has broken failed come loose i'm not really sure but either way the hose leaked coolant onto the floor onto my tires through a fast part of the circuit miss hit miss minimum speed through there is about 180 kph uh yeah and as a result slid into the barrier which caused contact with the rear and then the front so it damaged the rear suspension rear left suspension front left suspension as well as maybe the rack and all sorts uh, in there as well so yeah that put paid to us very early on which was a massive shame very interesting race crazy race i mean it was a real rate of attrition it seemed that no one wanted to win the race there were the penalties there were breakages there were and my Instagram story stopped and I wasn't even in the mood to finish the Instagram story then. Uh, yeah, very entertaining race. Unfortunately, to only watch from the sidelines and not be a part of. Huge amount of effort goes into events like this. Literally a whole year's worth of preparation goes into this from everyone's perspective. The team, the mechanics, um, the sponsors, the drivers and for something as trivial as a 50 pence, a 50 cents clip to have failed it throws absolutely everything down the pan and yeah unfortunately that is 24 hour racing for you um yeah it was a hell of an experience to even get to that point in the first place i feel quite unlucky that i was in the car when the breakage happened and i had to have that on my shoulders because until i got back to the pits and the team did their investigations i thought it was something that was my fault i thought it was me that had suddenly dropped the car because i was pushing to catch the p3 um, in the final two laps of the stint so i felt so guilty i felt like my career had been completely stopped that was it i was done no one would ever take me to drive their race car again so i'm i'm, I'm glad that it wasn't my ability it was something down to the car and it was just yeah a shame and unfortunately you have to take that as a team and win as a team and, and and lose as a team so yeah a lot a lot's been learned and i hope to have another crack at this event in the future um but yeah huge shame i hope that this video uh, gave you an insight into what it's like to have done my first never green 24 hours uh, and the event itself so if you enjoyed it please give it a like and uh, if you like this content please make sure you subscribe for plenty more videos like this to come catch up soon bye bye